Ancient of days, we worship you. The beginning and the ending, we magnify your name. Thank you for the salvation of our souls. Thank you that thus far you have helped us. Thank you for what you did on Thursday. Thank you for what you did on Friday. Thank you for what you did yesterday. And thank you for what you are yet going to do today. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. My Lord and my Savior, I am praying that very soon we might be departing, but please abide with your children. Amen. Never leave them alone. Stand up for them, Lord. Scatter all their enemies. Let your light shine. And let there be no more trace of darkness in their lives. Please, my Father, my God, in Liberia forever, let there be light. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Uh, someone shout hallelujah. Then shake hands with one or two people and tell them God is about to give you the best. And then you may please be seated. God bless you. I'm going to ask you one more time to give the Lord a round of applause for this choir. I go around the world because by the grace of God, the redeemed Christian Church of God is in many nations of the world. And uh, I'm sure anybody who knows me, they know I, I have an ear for good music. So we have some fantastic choir all over the world. This is a good one. I will report to you at home. <laughs> I will tell them I, I have a good choir in Liberia. <laughs> and one of these days, if, as the Lord tarries and it makes provision. We will charter a plane and bring you to Nigeria. They are good. No doubt about that. Very, very good. Praise God. I want to pray for one young man, um, Pastor Pat. I came to come forward. He came here, as you know very well, as a soldier uh, from Nigeria through the Ekoma. And uh, he looked around. Uh, there's no church where I can, there's no redeemed church here where I can go and fellowship. And he said, well, if there's no one, 
Why don't I start one? That's my kind of boy. I want you to please help me. Stretch your hands towards him and say, Almighty God, continue to bless this your son. Continue to make him a vessel unto honor. Bless him, bless his family. Use him for your glory more and more. Just continue to be with him, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. And so, my Father, my God, I commit this your son into your hands. Thank you for the seed you sowed through him that has now grown all over Liberia. I thank you. Now, and I'm asking, Lord God Almighty, that you will reward him. Amen. Reward him with good health. With success, Amen. with promotion, Amen. with joy, Amen. with victory, Amen. with overflowing anointing. Amen. Let it be well with him. Amen. Let it be well with his family. Amen. For the rest of his life, don't let him know sorrow. Amen. And let him serve you to the end. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my son. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. From verse 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died... I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above his two, the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I'm undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Let there be light, can also mean let my eyes be opened. Because according to Matthew chapter 6 verse 22, Matthew 6 22, the light of the body is the eyes. So when I say, Lord, let there be light, it means open my eyes. Open my eyes like you did for Isaiah. Because there are three types of eyes. We have physical eyes. In Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. Mark 10, 46 to 52. Bartimaeus was blind physically. And when Jesus Christ Asked him, what do you want? And he said, I just want to see. I want your light. 
his physical eyes were opened. And then there is what is called the eyes of the soul. You know, man is a trinity, body, soul, and spirit. The eye of the soul is called the eyes of understanding. You know, when somebody has been trying to explain something to you, and suddenly you understand, you say, I see. That means my eyes of understanding have been opened. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, Ephesians 1, verse 18, it said, I pray that your eyes of understanding be enlightened, be opened. In 2 Chronicles chapter 6, from verse 6 to 12, 2 Chronicles chapter 1, from verse 6 to 12, when God asked Solomon to ask for one thing, all he asked for is, uh, give me wisdom. Open my eyes of understanding. And then, of course, there is what we know to be the spiritual eyes. In Psalm 119, verse 18, Psalm 119, verse 18, David prayed. He said, open down my eyes that I may observe wondrous things out of thy law. Some people have asked me again and again, how come you will read a passage of the Bible? And we have been reading this passage for years. And then you begin to bring out some truth out of the passage. How do you do it? I said, ah, I prayed. And God opened my spiritual eyes. I pray for all of you who are here today. Physically, God will open your eyes. Soulishly, your eye of understanding will be opened. And more than that, your spiritual eyes will be opened. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9 to 15, 2 Kings chapter 2, 9 to 15, when Elijah was about to depart and he asked Elisha, what do you want? And Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit. Elijah said, you have asked for a hard thing. He said, but provided you see me when I'm taken away from you, then you will get what you want. If only God will open your spiritual eyes today, no matter how hard your request, it will be granted. Open my eyes. That's the meaning of let there be light. That I may see what? Elijah, Isaiah saw the glory of the Lord. I pray for every one of you here. Today, you will see the glory of God. When we talk about seeing the glory of God, we are talking about God performing for you a miracle that you yourself cannot even believe for. Remember the story? When Lazarus died and he had been buried four days, so all hope was lost. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. The sister said, Uh uh, this miracle is beyond God. 
He said, if you had been here before he died, or when he had just died, yeah, but he had been dead for days. Jesus said to her, if only you will believe, you will see the glory of God. To see the glory of God is to receive a miracle beyond human understanding. You know, there are miracles and miracles. There are some miracles you can't even testify about. Because if you tell them this is what God did, they won't believe you. No, they won't believe you. I mean, I can give you several examples. A young man was walking in Lagos, and then they told him his sister died in the east of Nigeria. And uh, he told them, please don't bury her yet. I will get permission from my place of work so I can come and be there. By the time he got permission and was able to arrive, the woman had been dead for 11 days. They, have, they, they embalmed her and kept her in the house. But he had an handkerchief that had been anointed by us and entered carrying the baby of the woman who died because the woman had, had a little child before she died. Enter the room, lay the handkerchief on her, and commanded, command you in the name of the God of Adeboe, arise. Nothing happened. I, I thought, well, I just believed. I wasn't expecting too much anyway. And the baby was crying. Get up now. Your baby is crying. Nothing happened. So he turned and began to go out of the room in sorrow. When he got to the door, he had a sound behind him and turned, and the sister was sitting up. And when you have that kind of testimony, people will think you are joking. They will say you fake it. Uh, nobody was there when it happened. Ah, uh, we sure the woman was actually dead. You know, they begin to ask questions. That's the kind of miracle that is called the glory of God. There is someone here today. As the Lord lives, God will open your eyes. And you will see the glory of God. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, the Bible says, when you behold the glory of God as in a mirror, then you yourself, you are changed from glory to glory. If only you can see the glory of God. Nobody will be begging you not to sin. No, 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 no. Because God will be transforming you from glory to glory. By the time he had performed one miracle after another in your life, if there's a temptation to sin, you will say, ah, ah. After all that God has done for me, no way. You know, I believe very deeply that there's someone here today who may think he's already great. Before the end of this year, you will look back and say, I didn't even know the meaning of greatness. Elijah, Isaiah Rada, got his eyes opened and he saw the glory of God. 
You know, in Exodus 33, from verse 18 to 23, Exodus 33, from verse 18 to 23, God gave an opportunity to, to Moses ask for one thing. What do you want me to do for you? He said, I, I just want to see your glory. So that's all I want. After he had been serving God for almost 40 years, God said, okay, now Moses, you are my friend. You have found favor with me. You have been a very good boy. What can I do for you specially? Ah, he said, all I want is to see the glory of God. How many of you would love to see the glory of God today? Let me hear you say amen. But then when God opened the eyes of Isaiah, he didn't just see the glory of God. He also saw himself. He saw himself the way God saw him. He has been a prophet for years before this incident happened. Oh, he thought everybody else in the nation were, they were all sinners. Me, I'm the prophet. I'm the one telling them, you people are sinners. You must repent. Then all of a sudden, when he saw the glory of God, and he looked at himself, he said, hey, woe is me. You mean this is me? I'm a man of unclean lips. <laughs> and I've been prophesying. Living among men of unclean lips, I thought they were the only one with unclean lips. You know, I've always said one thing. If you ask a student to grade his exam papers, he will score 100%. Because whatever he wrote, he thought it was right. That's why he wrote it down. It's when you hand over the paper to the examiner that he will suddenly discover, ah, I didn't even score 10%. There are many of us here who think we are holy men of God, holy women of God. We win souls. We pay our tithes. We give our offerings. We build churches. We do this. Uh, me, uh, if God should come today, if he doesn't take me with him, who else will he take with him? Wait till God shows you yourself. Then you will remember that Isaiah 64 verse 6, Isaiah 64 verse 6 says, all our righteousness they're like filthy rags before the Almighty God. I had a vision several years ago in Kenya. There was this world conference of Pentecostals, and I went. I'm already a pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, big man of God. And then we had one of the programs they call it meditation. Everybody will sit down, you close your eyes and begin to think about God. And there was a man, a musician who was worshiping God on the guitar. Very great man. So that you, you forget everything about what's going on outside and you're either worshiping God with him or you are praying. Every act and the atmosphere was solemn. And all of a sudden, I was in a vision. And I found myself in a very big hall, just like a dome, very big. To my right, I saw angels, many of them. To my left, angels. 
Very, very huge. So the next time somebody draws an angel like a small baby, you know that fellow is drawing demons. Very, very huge. Yes. I mean, much taller than the, this place. Thousands of them. When I turn to the right, the angels move back. When I turn to the left, they, they moved away from me. Because far, 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 far ahead, very far ahead, I saw someone sitting on a throne. And I wonder why the angels were moving away from me until I took a look at myself. And I saw myself totally naked. I saw myself as somebody who had been plucked from sewers, covered with all manners of death. Nobody said a word. The one on the throne didn't say a word. The angel didn't say a word. They've, sh they've shown me what they want me to see. When the vision was removed, I, I, I made a decision. Almighty God, one way or the other, I'm coming back to this room and then I will not be covered in faith. That's when holiness became my theme song. That's why you find that there is no way I can preach a sermon and I will not ask you to be holy. You see, when God shows you who you are, suddenly you become humble because you know you are not, you are not anything near what God expects from you. Isaiah saw himself. I'll feel thee. When God shows you yourself, it will be like Joshua chapter 13 verse 1. Joshua 13 verse 1. The Bible says Joshua was old. He was old and stricken in age. And then God said, Joshua, you are old. You are well stricken in age. But there are still many land to be possessed. Joshua, you think you have succeeded? You think you have made it? But God said, Joshua, you have failed me. Because when I called you, I told you, you are to divide the whole land to the people. But there are so many land yet to be possessed. It is when God shows you yourself that you will know Whatever you think you have achieved is nothing compared to what God wants you to achieve. God did not bring you into this world to be small. Mm -mm 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 -mm. God does not make small things. He's the almighty. The African elders have a saying the lion does not give birth to dwarfs. The baby of a lion will be a lion. The elephant does not give birth to dwarfs. The baby of an elephant will be an elephant. A baby elephant, many a times, is bigger than a cow. And God is your father. Your father is not small. His plan for you is not small. He expects you to be great. You know, we are, I was crying when the choir was singing, Liberia shall be saved. Why was I crying? Because the original song says, Africa shall be saved. 
And here we are. We are still struggling to see the salvation of Liberia. Whereas Africa is waiting for us. May God open your eyes today. Yeah. And show you where you are compared to where you are supposed to be. Open my eyes, O oh Lord, that I may see the glory of God, that I may see myself as God sees me, that I may cry for help. Because that's what Isaiah did when he saw himself. He said, ah, woe is me. I'm undone. And God had in heaven. I said, all right, all right. I help you. He sent an angel from heaven with a coal of fire. I said, all right. Now you've seen your lips are dirty with all the pride that you have been operating in. We can take care of that. You know, the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, it says, when you call on God, he said he will answer you. The problem is many of us have not even been calling on him. And some of us are already satisfied with where we are. <laughs> so why do we need to cry for more? He promised in Psalm 50, verse 14 to 15, Psalm 50, verse 14 to 15. He said, if you call on me in the day of trouble, I will answer you. So when it's time to pray today, and I believe that they will allow you to do some serious praying, I have to go. Don't, you shouldn't leave as, that, as soon as you see me leaving. But you know, <laughs> there are some people waiting elsewhere. After I finish preaching, and I'm on my way, you pray. Cry to God today. Because as you open your eyes and you see God and you see yourself, cry to him for help. And he will send help. Open my eyes, O oh Lord, that I may see your glory, that I may see myself as you see me, that I may cry for help, that you may send help to me, that I might receive a kiss of fire. That tongue of fire touched the lips of Isaiah. Ask the scientists, they will tell you the most sensitive part of any human being are the lips. That, I mean, that's why when you want to say, I love you, what do you do? You kiss. And when God wants to say to Isaiah, all right now, we can become friends, he sent him fire to kiss. You know God himself is a consuming fire. A kiss of fire. That might be a bit uh, painful. Well, maybe. But you see, God can move you to a level that is similar to that of Moses in Numbers chapter 12 from verse 5 to 8. Numbers 12, 5 to 8. The Almighty God says, if I want to talk to prophets, I show them dreams. I show them visions. But when I want to deal with Moses, I talk to him mouth to mouth. The first time I read that passage, I thought God was saying, 
I talk to him mouth to the air. You know, when you want to whisper something to somebody, you put your mouth close to the air and talk so that nobody else will hear. No, no, no. God said, I said I talk to him mouth to mouth. I kiss him. If the Almighty God gives you a kiss of fire, the result is, from that moment onward, whatever you say will come to pass. You know, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 19, 1 Samuel 3, verse 19, the Almighty God says in his word that he didn't allow the word of Samuel to fall to the ground. That means when Samuel is saying something, before the saliva in his mouth can touch the ground, what he says is already done. There are not too many people like that. But you can be one of them. Uh, some time ago, a husband and wife came to us and they said, Daddy, pray for us. We want children. We've been married for long. So I said, okay. Before I pray, tell me what, what kind of uh, baby do you want? Simultaneously, they answered. The husband said, a boy. The wife said, a girl. So I said, okay. You can have a set of twins. A year later, they came. The husband was carrying a boy. The wife was carrying a girl. May I decree to your life today that your joy will be doubled. If he gives you a kiss of fire, whatever you decree shall be established. Lord, open my eyes. I want to see your glory. I want to see myself as you see me. I want to be able to cry to you for help. And I know you will send help. And I don't mind the kiss of fire. And then what follows? God now said to Isaiah, Who shall I send? Who will go for me? Isaiah said, I volunteer. You know, I believe God sent me to Liberia because he's looking for someone to sing. He's looking for someone who will be his ambassador. Someone who will take the revival to a new level. He's looking for someone who will not need to lay hands on people before they get healed. Is looking for someone that he can talk to mouth to mouth. Yeah. It's looking for someone who will be preaching and suddenly God will speak to him and he will stop the preaching and say, hey, there's someone here. And as soon as he's finished talking, the miracle happens. Yeah. God is looking for someone like that. Yeah. Is there any volunteer here today? Is there anyone here who will say, God, send me? Are you the one? Huh. You're not even sure. Are you the one? Yeah. Isaiah had been a great man of God. He is the one who had prophesied in Isaiah chapter 1. Uh, Isaiah chapter 1 from verse 19 to 20. If you are willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. But if you don't obey him, well, whatever happens to you, take it. 
He was the one who prophesied in Isaiah chapter 3 from verse 10 to 11. Isaiah 3, 10 to 11. Say ye to the righteous, he shall be well with him. Woe to the wicked, he shall be ill with him. He has been prophesying. But now, after that encounter, <laughs> he was the one who said in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, Isaiah 7 verse 14, Oh, behold, a virgin shall conceive and be a son. If you are not a prophet that knows your stuff, in Israel in those days, you prophesy a lie, they stole you to death. But because this man had had a kiss of fire, when he said, a virgin shall conceive, they said, we believe. Because he had received a new commissioning. Today, the Almighty God is going to find a representative among you. Yeah. It's going to empower you. So that the work of the ministry will become easy for you. Yeah. Let me conclude. How can I see God? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man can see God. The Almighty God is willing to reveal himself to anybody. Anybody who will be committed to a life of holiness. It doesn't matter what other preachers may be saying. These fellows say, thank you very much. All I know is, God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. If only you can make up your mind, whatever may be happening, it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing, that's none of my business. My God asked me to be holy, I will be holy. And like I've said it before, holiness is not a difficult thing. It's not a complicated theology. Holiness is simply obedience. The original thing was disobedience. When God said, don't eat this fruit, and Adam and Eve they ate, that's what called sin. What is holiness? God says, sit down. Yes, Lord. Stand up. Yes, Lord. You're not going to eat tomorrow because I want you to fast over all that you have had over this uh, weekend. Yes, Lord. Don't commit adultery. Yes, Lord. Don't steal. Yes, Lord. I want you to pray throughout tonight. Yes, Lord. No, no, no. I don't want you to pray at all. I just want you to sleep. Yes, Lord. That's holiness. It's as simple as that. As simple as that. Liberia was not in my plan for this year. Uh -uh. I always finish my plan for the coming year by end of June. 2025 now concluded. When I was finishing my plan for this year, Liberia wasn't even in my thought at all. But then a couple of months ago, two pastors here came to my office. <laughs> Daddy, well, maybe one of these days you will come to Liberia. Uh, I look at them, I laughed. They're talking to me when I'm already concluding the plan for 2025. And you're not talking of 
I just laughed. But after they left my office, God said, you are going to Liberia. I said... <laughs> I said, yes, Lord. So the next time I saw them, I said, I'm going. You don't believe me? Go and, you know, you know a lot of work that has been done at the headquarter church. Why do you think they started hurrying to do the work? They themselves didn't know I was coming. Nobody knew, but God knew. And once he said, go, I go. Don't go, I won't go. Stand, I stand. Sit down, I sit down. That's holiness. It's not difficult. How many of you are ready for a life of holiness? How many of you will obey God completely without any argument, without listening to your theologians? They let them use all their theology to say what in my own is. Whatever God asks me to do, I will do it. So today, you are going to pray. And your prayer is going to be, God, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Show me your glory. Perform a miracle in my life that I, I won't be able to share it openly. Let me see your glory. And let me see myself. Let me stop deceiving myself that I'm what I am not. And help me to cry to you for help. And then send help to me. Give me a kiss of fire. And recommission me. Move me to a higher level of ministry. But then, of course, you, you can't be talking about holiness if you have not even given your life to Jesus Christ. I mean, when we are talking about holiness, it's as if we are asking you to uh, put a high, uh, what do you call it, body lotion on you. And you put body lotion on a body that has not been washed. And I'll be wasting your time. You will be thinking so if there's anyone here and you know you are not yet saved, I beg you, come. Come and bow before the almighty God so that his blood can wash away your sins. I'm going to count from one to five. So if you want to give your life to him, come now as I count one. Two. Three. Oh, glory be to God. Come, today is your day. This is your day of salvation. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Thank you, Father. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Fall. Amen. Okay. Amen. Now, those of you who are still on the way, keep coming. Don't stop. Keep coming. Those of you already in front, cry to God. And say, Lord, save my soul. Have mercy on me. Let your blood wash away my sins, Lord. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. I will obey you in everything. Go ahead. Talk to God. Lord, have mercy on me. Wash me clean. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands to our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them. 
that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. Pray for them. Pray for them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And so, my Father, my God, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. And thank you for these, your children, that have come forward to surrender their lives to you. Please, Lord, receive them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Save their souls. Please write their names in the book of life. Let them become true children of the living God. And from now on, let them serve you. And whenever they pray, answer them by fire. Don't let them ever go back into the world. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Now, I rejoice with those of you who have come forward today. Your, your case is very special because you are the last harvest before I travel. So I want to promise you I'll be praying for you. And so I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer request. And I promise you I'll be praying for you. Now the counselors will attend to you. They will collect the information I need and they will send me a copy. And I promise you, I'll be praying for you. But before you go with the counselors, I want to pray for everybody now. So I want you to stay where you are. The rest of us, are we ready for prayers? I didn't hear your yes. Almighty God, I commit your children to your hands. Very soon they'll be praying. Whatever they ask of you today, no matter how hard, please grant unto them. Any miracle they ask for now, before the sun sets today, let it become a testimony. Please, my Father and my God, show them your glory. In your own miraculous way, that kind of testimony that will be hard to share, make available to them. And among them, Lord God Almighty, I want you to raise up mighty, mighty evangelists. Through them, let Liberia be saved. Very soon, let the revival here spread throughout Africa. Answer their prayers, O oh Lord. And uphold each and every one of us to the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now you want to cry to the Almighty God. You want to say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, open my eyes. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Talk to the Almighty.